Hello again, this is 10.4 Energy Transfer. So in the last um, video we looked at charge and we were given a few an equation to use and hopefully we've practiced those questions or you've come on to this video and you can watch this video without doing those questions. Um, you'll just do them in class. All right. So when we're talking about uh, electrical circuits, and this whole topic is called electrical energy, we need to know what's happening with the energy. So here's a simple series circuit. We have a battery. Now the battery gives energy to the electrons. Um, and that makes pretty much sense, because if you have a fully charged battery, things work really well. And as the, uh, the battery gets used, things uh, start to move slowly, like uh, if you have something that's running off the battery. So the electrons leave the battery, uh, and the battery is effectively a chemical process. Um, they, the electrons leave with the maximum amount of energy, travel around the circuit. In this case, they come to a light globe, and at the light globe, the electrons pass through the bulb, doing what the bulb is designed to do, and most of their energy is actually converted to heat and light. And so they come out with less energy, they're still getting pushed along because um, it's sort of like a very long queue and the queue just has to move forward. And so they're still getting pushed along by these old guys that have lots of energy. Um, and then, so they enter the battery with very little energy and the chemical process in here works them through and they get pushed out again the other side. And so the light globe glows. Um, so in a light globe, the energy is being transferred to heat and light. Now this is the symbol for a resistor. And so in this case, the energy is being transferred to a heat. Now your old filament globe, which people still have, but which are being replaced by fluorescent globes, they use resistance to make light. Um, very similar to a bar heater. If you've got a bar heater at home that glows red during winter um, when it's turned on, that's a resistor. So you're producing heat. And something like a bell or a buzzer, they can produce energy into the form of sound. This could be a speaker as well. Um, big speaker or a little speaker, doesn't matter. It's transferring energy into sound energy. Here we're getting heat energy, light energy and heat energy. So what's the relationship between energy and voltage? Well the amount of energy that's being given to the particles is called the voltage or the potential difference. Same thing. Different name, same thing. Okay, so the more voltage you have, the more energy the uh, current is being given or the charge is being given. So a one volt supply will give what's called one joule of energy to every one coulomb of charge. Now a joule is a new term for us. A joule is a measure of uh, energy. And so that's why on some like when you go to McDonald's, it says how many kilojoules uh, a hamburger contains, things like that. And you can see it on the sides of uh, most foods and things, how many joules of energy there is. That's our unit. And so one volt supply will give one joule of energy to every coulomb. And remember, a coulomb is made up of lots and lots of electrons, each carrying a small amount of charge. Um, of charge that passes through it. So we have energy equals voltage times charge. E energy equals V times Q. So here's an example. There's our battery giving the energy. Now this thing here is a voltmeter. And a voltmeter measures the voltage in the circuit. It's not, it's designed not actually to be, it's, well, to be passive. So very few electrons actually go up here. And so it, it's designed not to have any impact on the circuit. So although it looks very impressive, it doesn't do anything other than measures the voltage. And at 12 volts, that means it gives 12 joules of energy to each coulomb of charge. And those 12 volts are, are being applied across these bulbs. So each, each it, here we have a voltmeter measuring the potential difference between that point and that point. And here we have a voltmeter measuring the potential difference between that point and that point. And <coughs> here it says 6 volts. And so this bulb also gets 6 volts because the voltage is shared. If we're putting 12 volts, and that's a measure of how much push we're giving the electrons, um, we've got to have 12 volts in the circuit. 
and so each of these globes has 12 volts so the voltage across each globe is 12 volts each coulomb of charge that passes through the bulb converts 6 joules of energy so we get 6 joules of energy lost there 6 joules of energy well not lost converted it's probably a better word um, and that adds up to our 12 joules that we got originally so that's a bit complicated let's simplify it by using some equations and so here we have V these two equations looks very similar and they're on your information sheet and they should be very similar now V is the symbol for voltage in volts Delta E means change in energy um, which is the same as W which is work and we'll do some more on work later when we do some some uh, more physics um, but change in energy and work are the same thing we know it's the same thing because they have the same units joules and lastly Q which we've had in for before is charge and that's in coulombs and so we can use either of these equations if we know two things we can use use it to solve the third thing as long as we're using standard units and so I'm going to be giving you a set of questions on voltage to practice using those two equations these are the answers again they're going to appear on the one note um, and so you'll be able to do those in class with a bit of help if you need to and doing those questions should clear up a little bit of misconceptions so in the next video we're actually going to look at measuring voltage uh, current and resistance. So, cheerio!